Hello guys, we're back here with another part of Stellaris, um, and last time where we left off, we were right in the middle of a war with the Raltech Sovereignty, um, right in the middle of wiping these uh, Xeno scum out, and at this point now, you know, we are going to continue the Blitzkrieg, we're not going to give them a chance to, uh, to come back or be able to do anything. It's been, um... It's been pretty fun um, uh, playing this uh, save file. It, I, I, I mean, I tend I tend to play uh, Solaris somewhat frequently, but I haven't played it in a little while. You know, for such a long period of time. Usually, I quit my save files pretty early, but because I'm uh, because I'm doing you know I'm doing these for a video, and then also um, I'm playing on Iron Man mode. It's a little bit different, so it's been able to keep my attention a bit better um, than it would otherwise. Um, and you know, I think that's good. So, here we take uh, Gordon. You see, we're purging all the pops, getting some minerals, food, and unity from that. Um, and so we're just gonna keep on going. We're just gonna, um, we're, we're, we're just gonna keep taking every, uh, every planet, every star that we can from them. And you'll notice, um, uh, slowly starting to get a little bit bigger, and um, I'm growing mostly towards the left side of the map um it's it's still gonna be slow go uh slow going until i can get a couple more fleets out once i have like two or three fleets i can start taking out like some bigger empires and just absorbing them into my territory much faster essentially but this is a good start because i'm gonna get a lot of unity from purging all these pops it's gonna let me um it's going to let me just get more traditions. It's gonna it's gonna let me uh, have more office for planets and stuff, especially with the uh, the new the new bow uh, receding uh, um, the new bow life seeding. It's gonna let me have more options for uh, for new you know colonies just the planets and stuff. And here I, I just really quickly clear the blockers on Earth to free up a little bit of space because I noticed that was a problem. Um, and right here, this is like uh, this is like the biggest fight of the war. So I fight a 1k star base and a 2.3 uh, 2.3k fleet at the same time. Um, good thing is, is I had only, not only do I have a bigger fleet, but I have a technology advantage here. So I managed to wipe them out regardless. But I do sustain, you know, somewhat decent losses here. It, it's um, it was about like 900 fleet power on that fleet, and it's enough to weaken it fairly, uh, fairly, uh, fairly severely. So. Um, Right there, uh, the Kel Azan Republic made peace with someone, I think, and they are currently uh, one of the biggest empires in the map. They're gonna probably have to be my next target after I finish with the Raltech Sovereignty because they're starting to grow out of control. And you know, um, when an AI empire kind of gets like that, you gotta really rein them in um, before they start to become a problem. And right there, we have like unrest happening on the planet, which it doesn't matter. The unrest will go away once all, all, all of the Xenos have been uh, pacified and, uh, and purified and uh, cleansed. But you know they're gonna be a little. There's gonna be a little bit of unrest till then. Um, yeah, yeah. The Rothek sovereignty had had a lot of bastions uh, at at, uh, at good choke points um, in uh, in their empire. So it was, it was kind of hard to to keep taking um, to keep taking stars without losing too many ships. I believe here in a little bit I'm gonna start building up my ships again because I noticed that I'm taking too many losses and that I should uh, I should do that, especially because I'm only at 37 ships out of my 76 uh, naval capacity. But you know, regardless, um, and right here I go to reactivate uh, my recycling campaign and my fear campaign because they ran out. Keep getting more and more expensive every time. Um, and yeah, so uh, this war is just gonna continue on for like uh, for a little while longer. But at this point, I I've taken a huge chunk of territory, um, which is great, because um, I plan on going huge this game, of course. Um, I plan I plan on going huge, uh, huge of course with uh, by picking uh, fanatical purifiers, and um, it's good to not be uh, boxed in as much anymore. But unfortunately. I still am kind of boxed into uh, to the south because of uh, the Gal the Gal uh, the Gal I think they're called the Gal Gas Trading Empire or Trading Coalition or whatever they're called. Um, the Southern Yellow Empire is which is like a corporation I think um, is blocking me. And right there, after clearing all the things on Earth, I decide uh, to get a planetary administration and get um, and just get some more civilian industries. 
and I go for prosperity here because I notice uh, how much how, how like how far negative my energy still is and that's just because um, that's because of like I'm feeling a large army and you know I'm, I'm conquering all these planets with buildings that are the fees are now going to me and I have um, I had a bigger I uh, had a bigger Navy but it's getting reduced and weakened so right here you see you're having these fleets that sort of start uh, starting to start to come in flooding in from um, from the the, the Kelzan Repu uh, Republic area and uh, they're they're the, they're the next target because they're the biggest but even if they weren't the biggest they'd probably also be the next target because I wouldn't mind expanding to the bottom and to the south um, and I could just grow big that way with um, with them pretty much with them pretty, uh, being pretty much the only obstacle them in the uh, the Yellow Empire um, as as the two of them together have quite a lot of um, space combined, and right here you see, so that's the that's the Celtic Republic. They're starting to send some like somewhat somewhat big fleets in. I mean like, I'm so, I'm still going to kill the fleet, but they're kind they're kind of like just letting it funnel in. Um, so that's why I started to make uh, new ships at the the Sol Station uh, next to Earth, as well as the Suda Station, which is one of the big stations I took uh, from the Raltec Sovereignty. Right there, and so see that I'm starting to get peace hours from them because uh, the war exhaustion is really high. But um, I'm just ignoring that because I want all my borders to be clear, and um, I want my, all my borders to be like clear and like uh, self-contained. I don't like having splits like that. It, I mean, it ends up getting annoying, you know. If you want to move stuff, you gotta like move it around, or sometimes in in a, in a game like this where the uh, where the star connections are lower. You know, sometimes you just get blocked too much because you don't have a certain piece of territory. So it's not good to peace out unless you absolutely have to. When you have like uh, breaks inside your borders like that, where you have like a like you have like a star, and then you have, like an enemy captures two stars, and then on the other side of the territory of that, you have like five more stars or whatever. It's it's not good to do that. So even though they're giving me a lot of peace offers, and even though I'm at like 90% war exhaustion myself, I'm I'm just waiting because um, I know I can afford to be patient, and I know. Um, and, and I know that uh, that it's worth it to have a completely clean, like a completely clean territory in the end. So right here, I have um, I just have my army camped over Tamith, but and they set they have like a like an army fleet there, but I, I can't kill it. Um, and it happens to me, <laughs> it, yeah, that, that happens to me a few times too, where uh, where my my minerals keep capping and I have to keep selling it, uh, so I don't run out of space. Once I have some more star bases, I'll probably start building uh, resource storages on them so that doesn't happen, but yeah. And here, I just start taking tile blocker clearings. Um, oh man, I'm tired this morning and uh, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit like uh, congested, but it, it's alright. Um, that's right, so now here I start looking at uh, what planet I want to take and I take Alpha Centauri 4 because I want to use the new uh, the new bow uh, life seeding on it but I believe that I use it on another planet before then I, and then I use new bow life seeding on the, on the planet that I'm colonizing right now. I'll use that later because the colonization takes like three or four years or whatever and it's too long to wait to just have that thing sitting on cooldown so to not have it sitting on cooldown and use it so I just pause for a minute. Um, I stopped for a minute. I'm just doing some planet upgrades and stuff, and I'm just I'm just upgrading some buildings and stuff, and uh, I'm am just sending I'm just reinforcing and sending all these ships over here. You know, see so you got people attacking and stuff, and they're still sending more ships. They're still sending more ships. Still sending more ships. So, and that's and that's the Kelzan Republic that's sending so many ships um, because they, they they have the resources to to, sh to just shove that many at me. Um, so I keep just kind of beating off all of these armies, but. Then with that, I'm able to, um, uh, I'm able to uh, unite those two empire, uh, those those two fleets, uh, which are both like 1k fleets. It's like a bigger 2k fleet to deal with this 700 fleet that's trying to take stars on the left side. Meanwhile, I have another army. Uh, I have another fleet trying to take territory from me from the north, um, which is kind of annoying. But uh, all of my armies and my fleets are directed towards the south because that's where like the main part of the war is. So then, see now I have a 2.3k fleet. So I go back to take uh, Pau Station, which is like a pretty big station. I, I can't take it without having like a 2k plus fleet because it, it it itself is already like a like a 1.3k or like a 1.4k star base. So I still declined I still declined the peace office uh, the peace uh, peace offer because 
uh, I still having stars missing that I don't wanna I don't wanna give up, and there's no reason um, there's no reason to uh, to declare peace when uh, when you have the setup like I do where if I just wait I can get everything. But at that point I have high war exhaustion as you can see, so I'm gonna be forced to peace out with the 24 months if I can't deal with it by then. Um, but it won't take too much longer. I believe what I do here is I just take Django back and then I might take Joel to run too. But then at that point, I pretty much just, um, I call it there and I peace out because the war is becoming, trying to become somewhat, uh, somewhat costly and they're not going to stop attacking, you know, so it's just going to keep getting worse. So, um, so they try to take, they try to take your go right here. I think they take it, but then I take Django back and I take your go as well. And I think that's pretty much it. And then I peace out. Um, so I'm starting to have a lot more planets and it's getting a little bit easier, uh, uh, to really build up with this much territory and this much space. There you go. So then I take, yeah, I take Yurgo back and then I believe that's when I end the war. And just picking up some basic technology, Cyberdrive 3, it's going to take a, a 122 months, but that's only because my technology score is really bad. Having 300 technology, I, I had like 200 or something, 220 before I really like started building some more uh, research lab and it's just like, it was like way too long. I had to start building some research labs because my technology was way too way too low and it was taking way too long to get tax and, and, and it's only gonna get worse as I get bigger because of the modifiers on uh, on technologies when you're when you have a big empire like that. So right here I send the peace officers they instant they instantly peace out. Um and that's it, that's the end of the war. So at this point, um I pretty much just draw my, draw all my fleets back because I'm not gonna be going to war with them for like ten years. I draw all my fleets back and what follows is, is essentially me preparing for the next war uh, over the next couple parts. I'm going to be um, fixing all my fleets up, upgrading them, making sure I max out my naval capacity. I'm going to be downgrading you know, the stations I don't need. Um, and then upgrading the stations that I do need, like that station there, so they can't just, you know, they can't just invade from different points. Um, and yeah, essentially at this point, I was pretty happy with the war that I waged. I gained like maybe like 10 or 15 stars. I gained a bunch of planets. I purged a ton of uh, a ton of Xenos, and I got lots of unity out of that. See right there, purging 17, getting like 40 unity per turn out of that, or 50 unity per uh, per month. I mean, out of that, very useful. And at the same time, I'm also colonizing Alpha Centauri 4, and I have uh, my new bow life receding ready uh, to start fixing some planets that have that I have low uh, habitability on. Right here, yeah, yeah, here you go. So see, I pop it and I use it on uh, Rat Tent Beer because it's a nice planet and I kind of wanted to keep it. I just didn't have the habitability, so I keep it. And of course, you know, just keep purging uh, everything here. But at this point, a, lot, a huge chunk of that uh, planet's population is Xenos. And once they all get purged, the planet's population is going to be lower. So, um, like, uh, that, that's something to note there. I believe I might lose. I, I think I, st I, I start losing most of the buildings on that planet. I have to, like, mess around and move the... And start moving all of the uh, moving all of the the civilians and all of the uh, all of my pops there. And then I start realizing, like, man, I have all these planets. Like, I start looking around. I'm like, I have all these planets that has like nobody on it, but it's using up all these build all these like all these buildings. And like, so I start to figure out, like, uh, do I want to like resettle? And I start looking around at planets that I figure I want to resettle. And right here, I saw that I had an on factory worker there. So I just I think I just had to keep that planet for now. But after that, I pretty much go around and I just resettle a few more planets. Um, kind of wanted to consolidate all of my pops onto one planet and not have to deal with having all these building fees on all these different planets for no reason. So I, I just look around and I, and I start I start like resettling what I can. Um, and I believe I resettle this. Um, I'm just resettling them to to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to not ten beer because that's going to be one of my bigger main planets. Then I have Nolan, uh, Nolian, or whatever, Noyoland, if you can call it. Not really an important planet, doesn't have anything special on it. Not really uh, necessary. So that gets resettled, everything gets resettled, boom, it's gone. And pretty much at this point, I just finished resettling stuff and um, move my pops around, get rid of a few colonies, and try to uh, consolidate my pops onto uh, Wraith, uh, Wraith and Beer. And, uh, and that's pretty much it for this part. So I'll see you guys in the next part. Um, Peace out. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we're going to keep wiping out the Xenos and Stellars. I'll see you guys later. Bye.